Good morning, Mayor Brewer and Council. <clears throat> My name is Shirley Cohen, 442 Waverly, Wichita, Kansas. I'm concerned about this item to pass a letter of intent for the Douglas Place LLC. The order of events seems counterintuitive, illogical to me, in that passing a letter of intent will precede the required public hearing. The reason given is that Douglas Place LLC has an option which expires before the public hearing. However, if the letter is not binding, then why is it before the public hearing at all? It makes it sound like everything is already cut and dried and decided and the public hearing will only be a formality. And the public often thinks this anyway, so why encourage that uh, impression? It seems likely that the parties in Douglas LLC t it seems likely that if the parties in Douglas LLC take actions based on the letter of intent, that that letter may be offered as pressure or reason why the various incentives should be awarded. I realize that it says it's not binding, but it seems I've heard before reference to, well, they took action based on what we put in a letter of intent. <clears throat> Although members of the council, mayor and staff, may have the best of intentions in wanting to move forward with the downtown plan to see a beautiful boutique hotel downtown. I have to question the wisdom of using taxpayer money or credit, if you will, in the current economic turmoil. Nationally, we have not dealt with our debt in any real way. Debt trajectory is still star starkly up. Standard & Poor's has downgraded the U.S. credit rating. Effects will soon ripple out to states and municipal municipalities in the form of higher interest on borrowing. There is a great deal of capital sitting on the sidelines in this country, which is not being used because of lack of confidence in our government policies. Why should our city take chances when many private investors are sitting on the sidelines? What effect will Douglas Place, that is the Ambassador Hotel, have on other area hotels, including the Hyatt and the Broadview? Lastly, to quote Ronald Way Reagan, what is euphemistically called government corporate partnership is government coercion, political favoritism, and old-fashioned federal boondoggles nicely wrapped up in a bright colored ribbon. It doesn't work. That applies to all levels of government, I believe. No matter what public-private ownership partnerships are labeled stimulus CIDs star bonds IRBs TIFs or whatever government is still trying to pick winners and losers the obligation of government is first to do no harm and then to provide public safety fire departments police roadways bridges and the like I too am concerned that money is being diverted from essential services um, And I was hearing the other day, and I know that this is true, there are businesses established now whose um, purpose of business is to match up um, opportunities like this with businesses. And they go around from place to place and study what uh, is available in terms of TIFs or CIDs or whatever. And I have to question whether those businesses would go ahead and um, go ahead with their business plan if those things were not available. And if they could not, then I would say their plan is not viable. <clears throat> Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you.